I'm Morton Ann Gernsbacher. I'm a violist professor in psychology. And um, I have been teaching by choice, completely online, for at least 15 years here at the university. And um, so for many years, I was the sole person in our department. But now Sarah is going to be joining me this summer. And we actually have a couple other classes that are coming online. I decided that I wanted to teach online um, because of what I know about learning and memory. And the fundamental principle that I wanted to take advantage of is the phenomenon that's called distributed versus massed practice. And so if you're trying to learn a new skill, be it playing flamenco guitar or speaking Portuguese or anything else, we know the literature is just rich with examples galore that it's much better if you take your practice time or your learning acquisition time and you break it up into small chunks and so that you might practice one or two hours a day as opposed to 12 hours a day and then you know practice again for a couple of weeks this is like the weekend warrior notion in physical fitness and we've known that for a really long time but what i had observed and i've been teaching um, in higher education before that, I was a public school teacher and been teaching in higher education since the late 70s. And what I have had, learned, had observed in my classes, particularly in higher education, is that usually if you have a class that meets a couple times a week, students will engage with the material the night before that class or maybe the morning of that class, come to class, stay engaged with hopefully, the material somewhat during that class, go away and not engage with the material until, again, another 24-hour period before they have to come to class. But we know that that's not a great way to learn. And we know that um, distributed, as opposed to this mass cram learning, is much better for long-term retention. And so when I first started teaching online, I actually took what I thought would be the most difficult type of course to, ex to exceed in an online environment, and it was a 25 student capstone undergraduate seminar. And those in our department in psychology with our gazillion majors are considered just the, the cherry on top of the Sunday. And that students you know, wait until their senior year and they actually have FaceTime with an instructor and then they're in a classroom with only 24 other students. They can discuss, they can share ideas. And I thought, if I could improve on even that situation by simply taking the course online and making the activity much more distributed, then it will be a really good litmus test for other large uh, classes. That, for example, I teach now. I teach a 130 student class that typically has taught in a two times a week power lecture. And the principle that I really, really took advantage of was distributed learning. So in my classes, they have five assignments a week, and each one is due at midnight on uh, each of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and Friday, because we, there's some data that suggests at least for one section of the student population that if they have work due on Friday or a class, that it can somewhat attenuate their drinking and partying behavior. It's not all the students, but it's, you know, there's some students who are going to go out anyway. There's some students who aren't going to go out at all. It doesn't matter. But there is this one fraction that you can um, hopefully capture. So the other thing that I loved about um, teaching online was the asynchrony of it. And students would tell me, particularly after the first couple of times I took that small capstone 25 student uh, seminar course online, students would tell me in their evaluations, this is the most I contributed in any class ever. And that it's really difficult in a face-to-face -face situation. And I do a lot of work on communication and communication in atypical populations, including individuals who are on the autism spectrum. And we've known that about individuals on the autism spectrum, that they're much more comfortable interacting in an asynchronous situation where you can sit back and think about what do I really want to say? You can look at what you said and edit it so that you're not so embarrassed about you know, um, having to speak on the fly. And there's also data showing that um, it's much more egalitarian if you have an asynchronous uh, mode of communication. Given all of that, one of the other things that I built into my online courses way, way back even 15 years ago was a dose, a little hit, of synchrony. And so in all my online courses, um, after the first couple weeks, we let people get adjusted the first couple weeks, and we also don't do it the last week because the last week everybody's feeling 
very distributed. Um, but during the, 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 the bulk of the semester, students engage with their peers in a one-hour text-based chat that's conducted synchronously. And I built that in 15 years ago using the clunkiest text chat platform in the world at Learn at UW that was called Side Blah Blah Blah. And you had to download. I mean, it was awful. Um, and I continue to do it. And the reason why I like it is because I do think that there is some, some uh, benefit to individuals being able to communicate in a smaller group. There's also some benefit of a class that otherwise could feel almost like the old um, uh, you know, distance learning where you're off doing your own thing for the entire 15 weeks and you only check back in at the very end of the semester. So I really uh, um, have used these text-based chats um, once a week for an hour um, throughout all the different levels of um, teaching online that I've been teaching. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate today. And you guys are actually going to do a text-based chat and you're going to do like a simulation of an assignment. Uh, the assignment that you guys did is one of the several flavors of assignments that I like to do. It's called the jigsaw assignment, and it means that each person reads a, a different thing and then you come together. This one was a little more stilted because you didn't have a lot of time, but the whole notion was that each of the three articles was, were about synchronous and asynchronous communication. One showed about um, it leads to more egalitarian interaction. Another one was that um, it leads to better decision making. Another one was a third piece of that component. And I use that kind of assignment maybe one out of every three or four group chats. Um, and another thing that I do is a go find. So the person whose name comes first has to go do such and such, go find such and such. Uh, the person whose name comes last alphabetically has to go find something else. Um, but then there are other times I just use it like a regular discussion where everybody's read the same thing and, they, and I believe that because of the t t type of material, they're going to have different opinions and different perspectives on it. But the jigsaw and the go find is just a good way to make sure that everyone is going to be able to participate and that you're not going to have the um, one person who is just going to um, dominate the conversation. But one of the nice things about text chat is that individuals really can't dominate the conversation. That, um, you know, I'm a pretty chatty person, and if Sarah and I were talking face to face, it would just be like blah, 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 and then maybe Sarah would get a word in edgewise. But in text chat, you could be typing your heart out, but other people can type too. And I think that um, back to the l articles you read, that's one of the reasons why people find that text chat is more egalitarian. And I definitely see that when I look at the transcripts. I see that um, you know, occasionally I'll see a group where one person's just you know, leading the, the band. But usually it's everyone is, is making some contribution. But I also build in the type of assignment so that everyone does have to uh, contribute, like using that jigsaw. Um, another piece that I wanted to demonstrate today was, um, I'll go back, thanks. Um, come back to this in a second, but back to the assignment. Um, that um, everyone has a different responsibility. And I do this a lot, and I hate that hamburger menu. So when you guys, <laughs> we get to that, I just, have to, I just have to complain about three Side times a day. I know how to get rid of it. Oh, good. Oh, this is worth getting up at 7 in the morning for. Thank you. Um, another thing that I do is um, I told you guys which of these tasks to do. Um, I, I tell my students about which, um, I, I, do, I do this part about who sets up the chat versus who joins the chat. That I do orchestrate. But I let them negotiate who does the three cleanup jobs. And the three cleanup jobs are pasting the transcript, which you think is a pretty easy job, but it has its complications because occasionally people <laughs> lose the transcript or they don't post it as HTML, and I'm going to show you in just a minute why it's important to post it as HTML. The um, writing the summary is the hardest job because, you know, you have to know what went on during that time. And then just posting the group's names, the reason why I do that is because I want everyone to post something because then I have something to grade in Canvas. 
So even though that's the easy job, it's the weenie job, everyone has to do. And the students are responsible for negotiating who does what. And I see that in their transcripts a lot, where someone will say, you know, last time I did the summary, I think somebody else needs to do it. You know, or someone will say, I have an exam tomorrow morning. If someone else could do the summary, I promise to do two summaries in a row. And so they have to negotiate that aspect of it. But everyone has a job, and the reason why is I want a post. I want everyone to have a post on the discussion board so that I can grade it. Um, also, so that, that means they're in the same group all semester long. Thanks for that question. So over the years, this is what I've done, and, and, and it just seems to be the best compromise, is I assign the chat groups um, at the beginning of the semester, the groups of three. I assign this chat groups at the beginning of the semester, but at mid-semester, I have them reassemble their chat groups. And I do the same kind of thing. If your name was last alphabetically in your group, you get to go choose a new group. And then you're, you know. And I do that because the, this, the literature on group work suggests that if you have people in groups, that there's kind of two, painted roughly, two types of students. There's students who like or at least tolerate group work, and there's students who despise it. And then if you take the students who despise it and you let them make groups, they like it better. And one of the explanations is that the people who despise it are people probably like us in this classroom because we end up doing all the work for it. And so if you get the people who are the go-getters and the super responsible people who normally dislike group work because they end up having to do other people's work, and you let them form a group together, they're a lot happier. I can tell you that when I let them reassemble at mid-semester, and we kind of have a week off from group chats, and that's what their task is that week, is to reassemble, that it's, it's almost by ability. It's, or I shouldn't say ability. It's almost by grade. I could assign grades on who found whom in that and who was really late to find each other. So the go-getters find each other super fast. The slaggers find the other slaggers. But everyone's kind of happy at the end because you know they're with each other um, in that regard. Uh, something else I was going to say is that um, in, even in my 130 student class, I divide them into sections of nine. And so I, the thing that we call groups on Canvas is what I call sections. And they're always just, their discussion boards are only nine people. And so when they do these groups, these chat groups of three, it's really just three per each section if that makes sense. So they aren't having to choose their other group mate among 129 other students. It's only among eight other students. And they've gotten to know them really well because they're the ones who are posting all the time. So I, but I, I do this last name first, last name comes first alphabetically, last name comes last alphabetically, and then the one in the, 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 the neither. Also, to handle the situation we had this morning, which is sometimes you don't have an even number of three all the way through. Um, the one thing I did on this assignment that I don't typically do is I gave this guy, because I knew they had to set up the chat room, I gave him a shorter article. So the people who were, who were first, at, last names first alphabetically, I normally don't do that because they go chat, set up the chat room another, a, a different day. It's not all in this one period of time. And I check to make sure they've set it up and I, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So today you guys did it all, you know, crammed in together. Um, let me just see. Back to, even though I don't have a lot to grade here. Smart course design. Yeah. So, I don't have a lot to grade. Sorry. <laughs> So um, this isn't that, um, I was going to say, this is, uh, it's attached, sorry. And, you know, I have them attach the chat transcript. It actually doesn't work in the way it normally does, but I have them attach the chat transcript as an HTML, because typically the way it works is it just pops open in SpeedGrader. And this one they made me download the file, or at least open the file. Normally, I just click it, and it opens, and it's just all right there, and it's really beautiful. And I'm going to be forthright. Between me and my TAs, we basically just skim it. We skim to make sure that, like, everybody kind of participated. We skim to make sure nobody came in super late. We skim to make sure there's, you know, and I've never seen it, but make sure there's not anything abusive or uncomfortable going on in that. 
Um, I do, at the beginning of the semester, I do some more ice-breaking things. I didn't do that, have a chance to do that in this class, but for example, I let the students decide on a name, and that's always, you know, a group name, and that's always kind of a fun kind of thing. They do, they, um, in, in my internet class, they um, two or three different times uh, discuss with each other their progress on their term project, and they get feedback from each other on their term project and kind of help. So I use these little small groups to build community. <laughs> Sorry, build community. My alarm again, making sure I'm really up to build community. Um, since we're getting ready to wrap up, let me open it up to you guys to ask questions about your, you know, what I do or your experience or what you might want to do with it. Don't see any questions? No. <laughs> You're probably wondering, why did you go through that stupid thing on Google Docs in the chat? And then that's because the chat feature on Canvas is actually basically just this huge discussion board, I think, that stays, that's public to everybody in the class, and it stays there forever. And so you wouldn't be able to have a three-person group. So that's why I came through. And then you might think, well, why not just go through GChat instead? And um, you, you go through GChat instead. Students actually have to go and do something extra to tell their UW Google account that they want to be, um, they, you know, they have to get Gmail, they have to do... Google Plus. Exactly. Yeah, and this way, people can just pop into the, the... How many of you even knew there was a chat feature on a Google Doc? <laughs> Some people might not know that. Yeah, it's really convenient. And the other thing I like about it is that um, it has a timestamp. You, you know, there's lots of fun things about chatting there because several of you said, "Can we just chat on the Google Doc?" Right. And you could have, but I wouldn't have known who was saying what, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't have seen the timestamp. Yeah, timestamp is really nice. I used to use this chat program on D2L that had one feature here that I like, that did, which is that it color-coded the people's names, and that made it a whole lot easier for grading, but it didn't have the timestamp. So I like the timestamp a lot. There's a, um, a pro and con, I think, of, one, it's all text, and you can't embellish the text at all, and you can't add photos mm -hmm. or pictures or anything mm -hmm. like that. So that adds the, or it, it constrains the amount of complications that you can have, um, which can be good, but on the other hand, it could be fun to say, like, I found this article, especially the go find me mm -hmm, chats, mm -hmm. where it's like, check this out, here's this link, or here's an you image. You can put links in. You can put links in, but you, I, you can't put images in. And I, right, like, right. I even found that with uh, the Windows on Firefox, you couldn't go back and click and edit what you talked about. You can't edit, it, and I actually like that. <laughs> a lot. I, 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 that's actually, to me, a, a, a design feature I like, is that you can't go back and, you know, and clean things up. That you're really seeing it as, like you would a face-to-face -face conversation. You can't go back in a face-to-face -face conversation and, you know, previously I said, such like, take that, erase that, you know. So I actually like that. Um, over the years, and like I said, I've been using these text-based chats for 15 years, and in the beginning, that's all we had. And then, of course, things like Skype and video chat came on. And, and over the years, I used to ask my students, or even give them the option, to do video or audio chat. Yeah, you know, they do not want to do that. They want to do text-based chat. They absolutely do not want video. There is not a single student who ever said they wanted video chat. Ever. Now, if we had a student who used sign language or, some, or the like, obviously, but the students in my classes who had not had, um, in fact, even students who have, who are signers, wanted to use the text-based text -based chat. So they really do like that. And I've also seen that they usually, they have to agree on a time to do it. Like, I told you guys when to do it. They have to negotiate with each other. And there's a lot of variability. Some, some Groups like to do it at 8 a.m. Others do it at like 10:30 p.m. Etc. Some groups, um, because they're the same for the first eight weeks of the semester, although now it'll be seven, <laughs> since they're all adjusting. Um, um, some groups have a standing time and they do it, you know, a certain time. Other groups negotiate it anew each time. That's their job. That's something I don't get involved in. And I will say, out of the 130 students, or even that plus another class of 25. Maybe once a semester I need to 
jump in and, and help students negotiate their time, but the, otherwise they're pretty, pretty good at it. So this is a, a silly question, but um, thinking about you give five assignments a week. Uh huh. This is one of them. This is one. So it's not each task like this. Yeah. The one this is chat. one. This yeah. is the. And this is one. and each you know in my head when I make these assignments, they are two hours, and so this is a one-hour chat, and then there's the prep. There's the reading, there's the finding, and that's the two hours for that day. And I usually do the text-based chat on Sunday, as it's due at the end of the week. Just to give people, because it's the one that depends on other people's schedule, just to give them a little more kind of time. Exactly. Yeah. So it's almost always the one that's due on Sunday. Um, I've never had them do not on Sunday, but I don't always use that one as my Sunday assignment. But just again to give people also the weekend in case of their work schedule or the like. Yes, sir. Um, what did you use before uh, you wrote the Google Chat? Before, well, on D2L, I used, there, there's the chat okay. feature yeah, on have, D2L. And, and I'm sorry? You just use the LMS. Yeah. Exactly, but there before that, before there was that one, there was one that was called Sci Chat, and you had to download the driver, and it was a pain in the behind. But students did it. Um, you know, usually I do it in steps. Like the first assignment one week is you find out who's in your chat group, you set up the chat, you know, room so to speak. But you don't chat until the next week. So that, you know, I can check in and make sure everybody's done what they need to do. Yeah. And it's not, like today it was crunched because you guys might have been having trouble. Well, yeah. And so that, this would have been separated in time and we'd be able to come in and help you on that. So. And they'd probably pretty quickly get into the routine of it if you do it every week. Yeah. I, like I said, I don't do it the first couple weeks also because... Um, I don't, I think, I don't get as many ads and drops as other classes my size, but everyone does get ads and drops. And, you know, I don't want to set up these three-person groups, and then that would just be something that would be super unfun for me to do, to be, re so I don't even put the groups together until the second week, because I let things stabilize. And I also don't let people add my class after the first week, I'll be forthright, because um, I believe in hitting the ground running, like this whole notion of syllabus week. I just think, I, I have like the exact opposite. I give the most work the first couple of weeks, the least work the last two weeks. Because I think their distribution of time, they have the most time the first couple of weeks. They have the least time the last couple of weeks. So so I don't let people add after the first week. But I yeah. think Martin will be around for a few more minutes yeah. to be able to ask questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I submitted a new HTML. I, oh. didn't, I didn't know if you wanted to try to open it Thanks. in SpeedGrader to see if, what that Thank looks like. Thank you. Appreciate that. Just to respect everybody's time, we're just a, we're a few minutes late, so uh, please help me thank Martin for coming and sharing. Yeah.